Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We begin today in Genesis chapter 16, verse 1. So get your Bible if you can, open it up to the book of Genesis. And we will begin in just a minute. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Remember, you can study all of the Bible with me right there using my audio Bible messages, and you study at your pace, at your convenience, and whichever part of the Bible you want to study. There are four complete series going through the whole Bible, all 31,000 plus verses for you to choose from. And then book, choose the book, the chapter, the section, click and listen. That's at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth, your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Genesis 16, verse 1. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Sarah, Sarai and Abram evidently acquired Hagar, this Egyptian handmaid, when they fled the famine in the promised land. They jumped ship and jumped out of the will of God, and they went down to Egypt. And among other things, they picked up this Egyptian woman, who's going to be a whole lot more trouble than they ever could have imagined. And maybe any of you even know, or some of you might not know. <clears throat> anyway, excuse me. We'll see. Verse 2, And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my, unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. It was acceptable socially, acceptable, acceptable back in those days, according to custom, for a wife to give her maidservant to her husband. If the servant had a baby, then the baby would be considered to be the wife's. Many customs back then, many customs today, have the approval of society, but not the approval of God. And this one did not. So Sarai's suggestion was sinful. Verse 3. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. Having a uh, God focus is important, and Sarai and Abram have lost their God focus right here. Instead of having a God focus, they were focused on the blessing that God had promised. They had a blessing focus more than a God focus because they wanted God's blessing in the form of a child so bad that they took their eyes off of Almighty God, they changed the focus from God, and they put the focus on the blessing instead. And when you do that, that leads to trouble. 16 verse 4, And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised, in her eyes. Well, that's problem number one, but that's nothing compared to the problem that's going to come as a result of this. Hagar, the slave girl, conceives, and then she gets prideful about it, and Hagar starts giving Sarai a hard time. Sarai and Abram should not have been impatient with God. 
because they were impatient and they jumped the gun once again and jumped right out of God's will, you got another problem. And this is a big one, as we will see. Five, and Sarai said unto Abram, my wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. Well, Sarai has no right to preach. She is preaching. She is complaining. In a sense, I, I suppose Sarai is right, meaning that Abram is the spiritual leader in the home. So he's responsible for this mess ultimately because it's his job to do what is right in the eyes of God, no matter what the temptation to jump out of God's will might be. Sarai offers Abram this young handmaid. Hey, Abram, have sex with her. Get her pregnant and her child will be mine. And then she throws God into the mix. That might be how God gives us our child that he promised. Well, Abram should have said, Sarai, no, I'm not going to take your servant girl. He could have said that. So ultimately, I suppose the guilt lies with Abraham, but not Abram alone. Sarah, Sarah has no right to complain because it was her idea and she tempted her husband by making this offer. So these two are having marriage problems. That's one thing I do want you to see. They're having marriage problems because they walked away from God in this situation with Hagar. Verse 6, But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dwelt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Well, Sarai came to Abram with her problem. And Sarai's problem was the slave girl. The slave girl that she gave to her husband to raise up a child. That was not God's will. Therefore, there is a problem. And this is a consequence to that sin. Right here. Strife. Instead of dealing with it as the head of the household, instead of dealing with this problem, which is the result of sin, as the head of the household and telling Hagar that she has to respect Sarai, look, we did this, it was wrong, but you're still Sarai's headmate. Now I'm going to tell you as the head of this household that you have to respect my wife, Sarai. That's what he should have said. But instead... Abram really drops the ball here, and he tells Sarai to deal with it, and boy, she does, in an unbiblical way, in a harsh way. And then Hagar gets fed up and runs away. So you see that there was problem after problem after problem ever since Abram, Sarai, and Hagar sinned. And it's probably less guilt on Hagar, the Egyptian, than anybody else. Because she was subject to Abram and to Sarai. And she was from Egypt. She didn't know the one true God. But she sure is dragged into this mess front and center. Seven. So she ran away. Hagar ran away. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the mountain, and the way to Shur. Shur is on the way to Egypt. So evidently, Hagar is heading back home to Egypt, carrying a child. Verse 8, and he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid. This is an angel talking to Hagar. Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence camest thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. The angel reminds Hagar that she is Sarai's maid. He addresses her, Hagar, Sarah's maid. So the angel of God reminds Hagar that she is Sarai's maid. Hagar did not ask to be in Abraham's household. 
but that's where she is. She did not ask to be their servant, but that's what she is. So her duty is to make the best of it. Hagar is to submit to the authority figures in her life, and that means respect her mistress. In other words, don't run away. It's not easy. But that the, that's what the angel wants her to do. As we will see, that's what God wants her to do, because notice 9. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. Well, she ran away because it was a lousy situation, but sometimes the will of God is lousy. The will of God is not always something pleasant for us. So God tells Hagar to do a hard thing, which is to return and submit to Sarai, who had treated her harshly. 10. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. So there's some good news and some bad news. The good news was that Hagar's child is going to become a great nation. But the bad news, especially for Abram's other descendants, the Israelites, is that the great nation you ready for this? Will be the Arabs. That's right. That's what this is. Hagar and Abram's son is the progenitor of the Arab people. They'll look at all the problems that are in the world, especially between Israel and the Arabs, but not just that, between the Arabs and the Arabs between the Arabs and the rest of the world, all stem from Abram's sin with Hagar. Be sure your sins will find you out. The Bible says, God will not be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So high oil prices, suicide bombers, all the Arab-Israeli wars, all the Arab-Arab wars can be traced back to Abram's sin and that he failed to say no to Sarai's suggestion, which was to take Hagar and have a child through her. What a huge mistake with ramifications that cannot even be calculated. How many people have died in wars because of this. 13. It says, And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Wherefore the well was called Beer Laha Roy. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Birid. So the God of Abram, and the God of Sarai, we see from this is no dead statue like the God that this Hagar gate girl worshipped down in Egypt. Nothing gods, statues, dead. Hagar met a real God right here for the first time in her life. She met a real God, not that old phony God of Egypt. And Hagar says, this God sees me and he saw me and I saw him. This was not just an angel, ladies and gentlemen. This was an Old Testament appearance of God in the form of man. It is known in theology as a theophany. Verse 15. And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. And Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. And Hagar did return, and she found something out about God. 
when she returned, when she stepped back into God's will and she went back to her mistress, he found out something about God. If God could take care of her in the wilderness, then God could take care of her back home in the service of Sarai. The Hagar did not need a change of address. Instead, Hagar just needed a change of heart. She did give Abram a son whose name is Ishmael. And Abram was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. And we're just getting started with this story. Believe me, don't miss our next broadcast. Until then, you can study all of the Bible with me, verse by verse, using my audio Bible messages at the Scripture Verse by Verse website. That's found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible, verse by verse. If you would like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's Word, because the second that you do that, you become a part of Scripture Verse by Verse and I can't tell you how much that means to me. I can't tell you how important your prayers are to me. So please do that. Also, when you take a break from studying, go to the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also makes you a part of this ministry. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.